Hey guys, welcome to episode one of the journey to becoming an independent watchmaker. Hey guys, my name is Dean. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I've been creating some watchmaker lathe how-to videos. And I basically did this because when I was learning to use the watchmaker's lathe, there was hardly any visual instruction out there. And so I set about creating videos that will fill the void through what I've learned and my experiences. But alongside those how-to videos, and I know I haven't made one in about a month and a half, bear with me, I've just spent that time upgrading the whole um, my whole workshop. But alongside those how-to videos, I want to create these week these weekly vlogs. What that means is I'm committing myself to upload one video a week of these type of vlogs documenting my journey from where I am right now to where I want to be. And where I want to be is manufacturing watches by hand using traditional methods and tools and manual machinery. And I think these videos will serve a few purposes for those guys who are interested in the watchmaking side these videos are going to be packed full of, you know, horological information and processes that I'm experimenting with or I'm trying or I'm doing. Guys who love watches, it will give an understanding of the time, the effort and the skill required making watches this way. And I think this will serve as a great information exchange. There's a lot that I don't know. There's going to be times where I need help from somebody. And I think that by creating these videos, I can get the attention of watchmakers, people who make watches, you know, skilled craftsmen, machinists, jewelers, engravers. There's a whole facet of skills that I know zero about, which I need to know 100% about. So now that I've got the introductions out of the way, this year I want to create a watch from the ETA 6498 movement. So if you look at the back of the 6498 movement, this is how the bridge design looks like. I got this drawing in a CAD format by downloading uh, the technical manual for this movement from the ETA website, which I will put a link in the description below. And then I got a free PDF to DXF converter, which converted the lines very poorly. And I put it into AutoCAD and I spent a lot of work getting it to this stage. So here's my design. As you can see, um, the design really follows the dual layout of the movement. The balance cock is definitely not finalized. This is just what I left with before I printed it off. I'm just going to start on the train bridge first and then I'll move on to the barrel bridge. And in the meantime, I'll redesign what I want for the balance cock. The first part that I'm going to make is the train bridge. So the next step is to disassemble the movement.
Now that the movement is disassembled, I'm going to take measurements of the depths and diameters of the recesses and the alignment pin using this digital dial indicator on a measuring stand with a granite base. After these measurements have been taken, I'll be using the jeweling tool to remove the jewels from the train bridge first. These jewels are fixed into position by pressing them into a hole slightly tapered and slightly smaller than the diameter of the jewel itself, allowing friction to hold them in the correct position. This is my jeweling tool. It just has a simple lever action. It's also to note that it has a micrometer adjustment here which is designed to allow the user to adjust how far the jewel can be pressed. I want to completely remove the jewel, but I don't want the press to go so far that it smashes into the plate. So it is a bit difficult when you don't want the camera to get in the way. I'm going to press the jewel out. So now the third wheel jewel has been pressed out and I'm going to go ahead and remove the other two jewels. These jewels are made from a synthetic sapphire and their purpose is to support the wheels in position and reduce the rotational friction. This is the third wheel pivot and it sits in the pivot hole in the jewel. The small semicircle recess in the jewel is known as the oil cup. And when the movement is assembled, this is where oil is placed. The oil enters the pivot hole and spreads out between the hole and the wheel pivot due to capillary action. Now that the jewels are removed, I need to measure the diameters so I know what size hole I need to ream in my new train bridge. And for that, I'm using this measuring tool, which is a JKA Fentaster. I probably butchered the pronunciation, so I apologize. So what I really love about this tool it has two styles of measurement, the jaws on the left and these flat pushes, and they have actually these small notches in them, which makes measuring distances of balance staffs a lot easier. It is extremely accurate and has a nice large dial with indices at 0.01 millimeters, allowing you to measure the diameter of human hair. I bought this tool new, but they often come up on the used market and I've provided a link to the search results for that on eBay. And I've also provided a link of where to purchase these brand new. Just a warning that they are not cheap. So I'm going to end the video here. In the next episode, I'm going to start turning and shaping the new train bridge for my watch. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see any of my upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or something you want to say, feel free to leave it in the comment section below.